right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is our videos for step two of learning our experiment. So we did step one already, that was our first video. And this will be the second part of explaining how to do our experiment. Any notes should be written after this pocket. So this was our pocket we made. So any notes should either go in the pocket or be written in your notebook after page 54. At this point, you'll have some notes already, so just start where we've left off. As a reminder, our purpose for doing these notes and this experiment, our purpose is we want to know an answer to something. We want to know what is the human impact or effect on our environment in Burbank. So what is it that people are doing to Burbank? Environment. Are we hurting the environment? Are we protecting it? Is, it? is the environment healthy? Is our environment not healthy? Do we have clean water, good soil, good air to breathe? Do we have conflicts? Is there violence? Is there abuse? That's our environment, all of these things. Our goal is to learn how to do an experiment, the ecolicious experiment, and our second goal is learning the language and steps of science experiment, which is learning about variables and experimental groups. Because we want to learn how to do an experiment, we want to know how to use the words for it. So we're going to keep doing this. Remember that you should have written this down. This was slide five of our first video on the eco experiment. If you have not written this down, please do it now if it's not in your notebook. But if you flip through your notebook, you should see slide five and then this information here. Please do so if not. All right, moving forward, let's go ahead, slide two. Slide two talks about what we're gonna learn about in this video. We're gonna learn about variables and variables we control. So we're gonna learn about all the things that we need to know about variables in this experiment. But first, one of the first things, before we talk about variables, we need to understand some things. So if you turn to page 36 in your notebook, you will find this paper glued in. And on page 36, it says step one, what do we need to know? We need to know first, it says the problem. If you go back to slide one here, it says the problem right here. So we know the problem. We wanna learn about how humans affect the environment. We use this to understand how science works. And when we do experiments, we first need to do step one, determine the problem. You can see there's many other steps. We'll talk about step two later. Let's move to slide four. Slide four says problem, so it gives us a definition. Anytime we see information in a pink box, we copy it down as vocabulary and definitions. So in your notebook, please write slide four and copy down problem and this definition. It says a problem in science is something we need to know. It's one of the first things we do for science is, what is the problem? We need to know what the problem is. And the problem is a mystery. So anytime in science there is a question, it's called a problem in science. Scientists think it's a problem if they don't know an answer. So any question is called a problem in science. And one of the first things we do when making an experiment is we need a good question. What is the point of our experiment? Our experiment, the point of it is the problem, which is we want to do an experiment that helps us remember what the human impact on the environment is. Here we have some tasks. So once you write the definition, good, let's do this now. It says in your notebook or journal, we need to answer one, two and three in our notebook. So this is going to be work we do for slide four. So slide four, you write the definition in the pink box and then we answer three questions. Slide four. So to answer question one, we're going to watch this video and we will do it together in this recording. Let's go to video one. I'm going to expand it and hit play. So pay attention to this frog. I'm going to pause it. Now, what we need to be thinking of is what is 
what is weird about this? What is a question we could ask about this frog? I'll let it play a little longer, but you should notice something unusual. Something gross about that frog. Now play a little more of the video. This is it when it when the frog is a tadpole. Let's see if he can figure out the mystery or the weird problem that's going on. So look at this frog. Look at this. What is strange? So you see this frog, okay? Now one moment, and then we'll come up with a good problem for what you just saw. All right, since we're doing this together, for video one, what was the problem? So looking at the frog, the frog had many legs, more legs than it should. A normal frog has four legs. This frog in the video had many legs. So the problem equals, so in your notebook, for two here, for number two, you'd say problem equals why does the frog have so many legs? Or why does the frog have a bunch of legs? Or write it in your own way. So for video one problem, I say why does frog have extra legs? Question mark. Always, a problem is a question, so what you write must end with a question mark, okay? Let's watch video two, and let's see if you can do a problem for video two. Ask a good question about video two. So video two, you'll do. So I gave you problem one. You come up with a question for problem two. So here we go, here's the video. I'll open it up so it's a little bigger. I'm gonna hit play. All right, so we gotta figure out the problem. So you guys work together, try to figure it out. Here's the video. So ask yourself a question. Let's see. So the question is, ask yourself something about this that you don't understand. Ask yourself a question or a problem. So create a problem based on what you see those butterflies doing, okay? All right, so in video two problem, write on, in your notebook, write your second problem or your second question based on the video. Any question that you have about what you just saw, you could say how blank happens, or you could say why does blank happen. So why does what you saw happen, or how does it, or any question you want to ask about what you just saw with the frogs and the turtles. All right. All right, sorry, the turtles and the butterflies. That's problem number two. All right, now let's look at question three. So in your video two, your question should be some kind of question you can make about frogs and butterflies, and we'll call that video two problem. Remember, that's the new word we're using. Any mysteries in science class, we call that a problem because it's a problem if we don't know the answer. Lastly, it says, what's this experiment's problem? So the experiment we're doing in class, which was slide five of our very first video, or slide one of this video, what's our experiment's problem? So you can pause the video and go back to the very first slide in this video, slide one, if you want, to figure out what the problem is, or you can look in old notes in your notebook and get that information but it's our Ecolicious experiment problem. It's the question we want to answer in our Ecolicious experiment. Please answer that now. Remember, go to slide five of your old notes or rewind this video and go to slide one to get the experiments problem. All right, in your notebook, please write slide five. So in your notebook, write slide five and then this definition, hypothesis. Hypothesis, you may already know about. It's an explanation for why something occurs. So it's why you think something happens. A hypothesis is also an answer to a scientific problem. 
So if you ask any question in science class and you think the, you know the answer, well, the question is called a problem and your answer to the question is called the hypothesis. So a problem leads to a hypothesis. So hypothesis here. So it says in your journal, it says review the evidence and hypothesize if wife, Queenie, here's Queenie right here, murdered her husband. So you got to study this picture. The problem is, so the scientific problem in this situation is, did Queenie kill her husband? And your hypothesis has to be, yes, she did, or no, she did not kill her husband. So you got to look. Okay? So in your notebook for slide five, you wrote down the definition. And now what you need to do is hypothesis equals. So write this in your notebook, hypothesis equals. And now let's go to slide six to get a little more information, a little more evidence before making a decision on your hypothesis. So slide six here has this information here, 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 and here. Please pause this video now and read these paragraphs and decide your hypothesis using the picture and this evidence. So decide, do you think she did it or not? Did Queenie, so your hypothesis could be Queenie did or Queenie did not kill her husband, okay? And you do this for slide five in your notebook. So write slide five in your notebook, hypothesis, and then your hypothesis. Okay, slide seven. So in your notebook, please write the word slide seven, and then let's write this definition. It's in a pink box again. We have our definition, variable. A variable is what we study when we want to learn more about a scientific problem. So anytime we do an experiment, we have a problem, right? Some mystery. So we experiment to learn more about a mystery. And we have to study variables to better understand the problem and to be able to create a hypothesis. So we need to know what variables are if we're going to learn more and have hypotheses in our experiment. So let's start doing that. What is a variable? If it's so important, what is it? So a variable. If it's so important in an experiment, to understand problems and to come up with hypotheses, what is it? So it's anything that affects or interacts with something else. So anything in your life that affects you, it's a variable. Anything that affects a plant's growth is a variable. Anything that decides if your bike works or doesn't is a variable. Something that affects something else. Or it's anything that can cause something to happen. So. Let's look at this task. In your notebook, in your notebook, you're going to write this right here. You see this design? I call this a brainstorm web. I want you to draw this in your notebook for slide seven underneath this definition. I want you to draw this brainstorm web. So in the inside, you're going to write boyfriend slash girlfriend, and then you're going to have four bubbles on the outside. So the question is, is in these four bubbles in your notebook, you're going to write four things that increase someone's chances of having a boyfriend or girlfriend. Four variables that decide or affect or cause someone to have a boyfriend or girlfriend. Good luck. All right, slide eight. We have two choices in your notebook. So in your notebook, please write slide eight and then choose A or B to do. So in your notebook, you'd write slide eight and then A or B. And then can you list five variables that impact your decision to go to a party or five variables that determine how quickly you get home while riding a bike? Create a brainstorm web again for one of these choices. Do that now. All right. Okay, so this slide right here we will talk about in the next video. So this video is over. Congratulations. I hope it makes sense and let me know tomorrow if it doesn't. Have a great day. Oh, you can always email me or send a message through Google Classroom if there's any confusion so I can respond to you before it's due and I can help. All right. Have a great day.